greetings and welcome to another video about voice attack and the Elite VA plugin for Elite Dangerous. In this episode, we're going to look at the Discovery Scanner. The Discovery Scanner is used to find out what's in a star system, especially when you're exploring and you're in the unknown. But you have to fire off manually every time you jump into a system. So you hold down the trigger button for several seconds and it builds up the charge and at the end it releases it, sends up the pulse, which detects everything in the star system. So planets, asteroid bodies, planets, asteroid clusters, fleet carriers, signal sources, notable self phenomena, etc. As I say, you have to do it manually every time you jump into a system. And if you're exploring, especially if you're fast exploring, aka jump, honk, scoop, jump, honk, scoop, it gets a little bit repetitive. And it's 3309 in the game. It should be automatic, surely. But it can be. So what we need to do is make use of the Elite VA plugin. So how do we do the auto honk? We need to go into the profile to begin with. And we need to use one of the Elite API commands. I know that this is the FSD jump command. Let's just scroll down. There we go. FSD jump. So this command is triggered whenever you jump into a system. So the journal writes that information out to the journal files. The plugin detects that something's changed. And then it will trigger this invoice attack. And anything you have in here will then be actioned. So you just think you just have to press the trigger button for the discovery scanner. But it's a little bit more involved than that. If we go to the game, the discovery scanner has to be assigned to a trigger, either the primary or secondary, on one of your fire groups. So you can see that I've got fire group A, I've got the discovery scanner on the primary trigger, and the surface scanner on the secondary trigger, the DSSing. We've got two other fire groups. One is for the composition scanner and dating scanner, and one is for my missile racks, which I'm using on foot missions. On all my ships, I put the discovery scanner on fire group A on the primary trigger, and then the DSS on the secondary trigger on fire group A. So that's everything's nice and consistent. You also have the HUD mode. So you've got analysis mode, combat mode, and it now says on there D scanner switch mode. So we need to know two things. One, are we in analysis mode? And two, are we in the correct fire group? So we go back to the profile. And if we bring up the plugin files, we've got the status file there and we have the bindings file there. We need both of these. So in the status file, there we've got the analysis mode, which is currently set to true. If you don't see that in there, just go into the game and toggle it between analysis and combat, and it will pop up in there. And we've also got our fire groups in here as well, which are there. Now, you'll notice there that it's got zero, but in the game it says A, B, C, D. It's just the way that the journal does things. So zero equals A, one equals B, two equals C, and so on. We've got that fire group there. If I change that in the game quickly, and we'll just change the fire groups. Click on that. The fire group's now gone to one. Change it again. Gone to two. Change it again. They're back to the zero. Okay. We've got the two bits of information we need, so we can now start building the command. So the first thing we need to know is the analysis mode, which is that one there. So we're going to copy that. And the other thing to bear in mind is when you jump into a system, there might be a little bit of lag between you jumping in and the ship being able to respond. To account for that, we're going to put in a pause of two seconds. But while we're doing the testing, I'm going to disable it. The next thing you need to do is check to see if we're in analysis mode. So we do other, advanced, begin, single condition, and true or false. 
if the analysis mode equals false, that means we're in combat mode and we need to change it to analysis mode. So we do OK that. So now we need to add a key press. We can go key press, variable, and then go back to here. And we want this one here, the player HUD mode toggle. We're going to copy that out of there. And check to three hundredths and OK it. So all that will happen now is when this command runs, it will check to see if the analysis mode is false. If it is, it will press this key. If it's true, it will just continue. And what we can do is a semicolon test command. We can just give it a quick test to make sure it's working. Test command. Straight away, it puts this into analysis mode. We know that bit's working. And the next thing we need to do is work out what fire group we're in. Go to the end. And in here, go back to status. And we want the fire group one there. We can copy that. Now to check which group we're in, we need to do a loop. We can go other, advanced, loop start. And then we need to do an integer, the variable name. So while it's not equal to zero, which is the file group we want in this case, we want the loop to continue. OK, that. And then we need it to press a key. So in this case, we want the file group toggle. Now you can either go backwards or forwards. It doesn't matter. We're just going to go forward. Other. We want to do a key press. Variable. But we also need to put a pause in it because it could be too quick otherwise. We need the loop to be able to detect the change. If it's too quick, it will just keep on running around and around and around. We'll put a pause in and we'll try, let's try half a second to begin with. That's all we want it to do for the moment. So OK that, do that. We'll change the fire group. Test command. It loops a couple of times because it hadn't picked up on the change from the journal files. We need to increase the pause a little bit. If we go back up to here, edit the profile into the command, and let's double it to a second. So I double click it and we'll go for one. Okay. Test command. Let that work there, and let's put it into the other one. Test command. Okay, it worked. We just want to test it now to see if it's got if it works with all eight fire groups. We'll just go in there. We'll just add in some bits and pieces. So if we do that there, that there, that there, that there, and then and that there. We should now have eight fire groups. So if we go through, yeah, we're now going through all the fire groups. So we can try test command. Okay, so it's still going through. It eventually got there. So what we might want to do is just add a slightly longer pause in one and a quarter seconds like that. Okay, that test command. That's still a little bit too quick for it. It'll get there. There you go. So in that case, we'll make it a little bit slower. Let's try one and a half seconds. Test 
test command. And that works. So it's a little bit slower, but it will account for having all eight fire groups in use. Let's get rid of these for now. That's one way of dealing with having all eight fire groups. There are other ways, but we can maybe look at that later on. So now we know that that bit works. We can also do this and test the combat mode. Make sure it works together. Test command. So it puts this into the correct HUD mode and it finds the discover scanner. So that bit works perfectly. All we need to do now is get it to press the key. The key press, variable, paste. Now with the discovery scanner, it, the trigger needs to be held down for several seconds. Now I know from experience that can be seven seconds, but if you wanted to, you could always test it in the game yourself. Go higher like that and do seven. Okay, that. Okay, done. And back to the game. We'll put discovery scanner, different fire group, test command. And here we go. The honk of discovery. And that's it. It works. And that works nicely. That will do that command every time you jump into a system. What if you want to be able to disable that command? Well, you can, but we'd have to put a few extra bits and pieces in. So if we go back to the profile, go into the command, and what we're going to do is we're going to enable that again now so we don't forget later. We can put a condition at the beginning to check to see if we've got the auto honk mode, as we can call it, enabled. So we go other, advanced, begin, single condition, and we want to do a, a true or false, and we're going to call this variable auto honk. And we're going to set it to true, and then we'll move the end condition to the very bottom. We're going to cut that out there and put it there. So by setting auto to true, it will then run anything within this section. So now what we would need to do is actually set that verbal somewhere. And what we need to do is make a new command, and we're going to call this enable auto honk. And we can copy this, go down to the description. And we'll put this in a category called exploration. So now we need to set the variable. So we're going to go other, advanced, boolean. Now I've got the Windows clipboard feature enabled, which is Windows key and V. Brings up a list of previous clipboard entries. Click on auto honk and we want to set this to true. Okay, that. And then we want a little bit of feedback. I'm going to go other, advanced, write value to log, and we're going to say auto honk is enabled. We're going to put that into a green, a positive, and done. Okay, we've got one thing quick. Voice attack by default doesn't save variables anywhere. They're only saved temporarily in the memory while, while voice attack is running. As soon as you close voice attack, all those variable entries vanish, they disappear. So what we need to do is we need to go back into it and we want to say save value to profile. Okay, that, okay, again. And then we're going to duplicate the command. And we're going to change it to disable auto honk. Copy that, paste that in there, and then we need to change that value to false. And we want to change this here as well 
to disabled. And we're going to change that to red. So now we've got the two commands, one to enable, one to disable. Enable auto honk. Disable auto honk. Now we know it's on, now it's off. If we want to get rid of the recognized commands there, we can go into here and then we just need to go other, voice attack action, ignore an unrecognized word or phrase, move that up to the top. We can copy that from there, go to the other one, down there. Now if we give the command, enable auto honk, disable auto honk. Personal preference it depends, you know, it just stops the, the, the voice attack log window getting cluttered with things. You don't have to do it, it's just that it's a personal option. Now, we save the variable to the profile. How do we get the profile to retrieve that variable? Well, we need to go back into the profile. We need to do something else. Now, what I generally do is whenever I make a profile, I make up a command called startup command or something similar, which will run every time the profile is loaded so I can initialize anything in that profile, such as variables. Let's call this startup commands. Now, put the asterisk around it so it stands out from other normal commands. We don't need to speak it, so we untick that. And we need a description. It runs on profile load. And the category will be startup commands. And in this particular case, we need to go to other. And then we need to see this one and we want auto honk. And all we need to do is say retrieve saved value. So whatever we it's set at, it reads it back in as. And then we can OK that. And then we need to go up to options, profile execution. And in here, we want this one here. Execute a command each time this profile is loaded. I mean, there's a, there'll be a lot on here, so we have to scroll down. We're looking for the one we just made. There it goes there. So we select that one. Okay. And then click done. So every time this profile is loaded, be it when you run voice tag or you switch this profile, it will run startup commands and then anything in that will be actioned. So that's the basic command running. So now what we can do is we can go and test it. Enable auto honk. So now we've enabled the auto honk mode. We can make a jump to another system. Engage. So when we jump in, it will pause for two seconds, check we're in the correct HUD mode and the correct fire group, and then it will initiate the discovery scanner. So I'm hands off now. in and there you go that's the command doing it all on its own we found nine bodies there you go that's how easy it is to do if you have any questions comments ideas what do you think put them in the comments section below and i'll get back to you as soon as possible if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful click the like button and if you haven't already Hit the subscribe too and share the video out. Until the next one, take care and I'll see you soon. Toodles.